This beauty is the K9 Jack from Jack Wolf Knives. Uh, the latest release from Jack Wolf Knives, this is number five, and uh, it is beautiful and different on many levels. First of all, it's the first spear point coming out of Jack Wolf Knives. Uh, we've had two clip points, a sheep's foot and a worn cliff. Uh, so this is the first spear point and Ben Belkin, designer, proprietor of Jack Wolf Knives, designed the most beautiful spear point. I love how it starts thin and gets wider and wider and then tapers back to that beautiful point. Has that gorgeous swedge. The grinding on this is just amazing. This is M390 blade steel. And as you can see, as I turn it, it is fully hollow ground, hollow ground all the way up to the top. It's a full height hollow grind, so thin, so cutty pretty amazing and then you okay you look at this sharpening choil and then you can feel it's very very thin behind the edge and it stays thin up until about the top of that sharpening choil and then it's just less thin I mean you could sharpen this thing all the way you could sharpen this thing considerably high if you needed to over the years and keep this very sharp and slicey yes that's right m390 blade steel on a traditional slip joint style knife um Oh yeah, and carbon fiber and titanium. Yeah, that is the Jack Wolf Knives recipe. Take these classic slip joint designs, Ben tweaks them to his liking and to his uh, preference, um, and then has them manufactured by an undisclosed manufacturer who does incredible job, uh, an incredible job, not only in all the machine work, but then in all the hand finishing. Um, that's what you get out of a Jack Wolf Knife. Uh, you get this incredibly hand-finished, high-tech, old-fashioned knife. Um, but not only that, you get Ben Belkin's English on the design, uh, meaning the dogleg is, uh, is an old pattern. Um, ben likes the pattern. He took the pattern and made it more to his liking, and that's what he's been doing with all of these patterns. And what he, I think he did on this knife compared to other dog leg knives, is take the ergonomics of the dog leg, which are there to fit in your hand, fit in that, that portion of your hand, nestle in there very nicely for use. Um, he took that and he contoured this in such a way that it feels better than any dog leg I've ever held. Also the fact that it's a single bladed knife and you don't have the spine of another blade messing up the contours uh, of this ergonomic handle also makes it very, very ergonomic. Uh, being totally honest, when I saw that this was the next one out, I was like, oh, that's cool. But dog legs, those aren't really my thing. But I was wrong because um, I never held a dog leg like this. Uh, and it fits so perfectly in hand. It feels so good to hold. And then this blade is so good to use because it's hollow ground, it's M390, it's very, very sharp. But also it has that downward angle from from the ricasso that just helps in cutting as opposed to a swiss army knife where you just have an edge and a spine with parallel lines here you have this widening and this bellifying down here and then coming to a point that downward angle really makes this an efficient cutter and then the way it sits in your hand and the way it presents whoops i keep bumping this camera sorry the way it presents to the material uh, due to the curve of the handle it makes it even more efficient. So this is a, an interesting looking, different looking slip joint, but all of the different lookingness of it, all of its uh, uniqueness actually uh, goes towards utility, goes towards ergonomics and utility. And uh, man, that makes this a really stellar knife. And it was an unexpected surprise at how much I like this knife and how much I love using it. Uh, something similar happened to me with the very first release. This is the Sharpshooter Jack and um, that beautiful um, carbon fiber. This is the first dog leg. No, that's not true. But but this is the largest, most hand filling dog leg I, or um, um, gun stock Jack I've ever had that didn't have a secondary blade in there. And what does the secondary blade do? It it obscures the, the contours of the handle. And the contours of the handle are its whole reason for being. 
uh, the ergonomics of this. I, I didn't realize until I had this one in hand how amazingly, um, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna backtrack. I didn't realize until I had this in hand how excellent a gunstock jack could feel in hand uh, just with its ergonomics. Um, and this, this did that. Well, the same thing happened with this dog leg. Um, so exquisite knife. You've got, uh, you've got these covers. These are twill carbon fiber, which I find really beautiful. And they sit in these pockets that are milled out of these one slab liner slash bolsters. On uh, ordinary uh, slip joint knives, you can see you have a liner and then you have the bolster soldered on. Well, this is all one integral piece on both sides. And then you, you know, it's not the whole thing integral like a locking knife. It's each side is integral. Uh, underneath the carbon fiber uh, covers, you have uh, the, the access to the pin and the screws. And uh, so kind of built like an, old, like an older school custom knife where, where the uh, structural hardware is kept under the, the front cover or the top cover. So how's the walk and talk on this? Exquisite. It's really crisp. And then this knife has a lot of the hallmarks that uh, knife nerds or, or slip joint guys really like. Uh, a flush back spring at the half stop. And that half stop is there so that when you're closing it, it doesn't gain momentum and take shear off a fingertip. Uh, that's the half stops are usually um, valued for that, but also it adds to the um, fit. It, it adds to the walk and talk, and also how you can judge the knife. Uh, you know how it snaps into that um, half stop, and then how it snaps closed from there. Really excellent walk and talk on this knife. Um, all of the Jack Wolf knives. I know that's a big uh, prerequisite for Ben. They have to be. Um, they have to have really good action, really good walk and talk, and they do. No blade wrap, no fingernail breaking. This is a seven and a half on my totally arbitrary scale, which everyone's is totally arbitrary, but if this is opening a knife, one through 10, and 10 breaks your fingernail, it's so tight, I would say this is about a seven or a seven and a half. So you get, you get decent resistance on both the pull and the push. Um, you could do it with one hand. Ah, see, damn it. I'm afraid to do it with one hand because that can happen. Um, but I guess that's if you're a noob. Uh, so you can do it one hand, but uh, I guess I don't recommend it. <laughs> I see uh, I see Ben do it on, on his uh, Instagram feed all the time, and it looks cool. And whenever I do it, I'm, gonna fr I'm afraid I'm going to do what I just did. Uh, so yeah, these knives are quite sharp, um, and uh, they will produce quite a bit of blood if you do it just in the right way. Hey, here's another thing that uh, that knife guys, that slip joint guys really like, and that's the fluted um, <clears throat> the fluted bolsters. Now, does that mean that the knife is better? Does that mean that there is a um, <clears throat> Some reason why you want that knife more because it has the fluted uh that that is i i think i've come to determine that that is strictly a uh <laughs> that is strictly a visual thing a um just a little flourish uh but i love it and actually on um, which one is it uh on the midnight jack he's got the the triple folders which is pretty cool I do love that. While while we're talking here, I'm gonna put a bandaid on so I don't bleed all over the place. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know where they are, and I don't want to cut now, so I'm just gonna keep uh, nursing this considerable wound. Look at that, Ben. I'm suing you. Just kidding. All right, so I want to compare this to a couple of other knives, uh, common. Um, slip joint knives, and then maybe some not so common so that you get an idea of uh, the size and, and that kind of thing. But actually, before we get there, let me show you the incredible packaging that each Jack Wolf knives, knife comes in. 
comes in this nice black soft touch box with the embossed um, logo in there and the timeless timeless design modern interpretation actually you can switch those around k9 jack uh very very uh, cool packaging as usual um you un totally unique artwork done with a comic book artist i can't remember the gentleman's name um, but they just designed some really cool stuff this one is mad max themed as you can see you get the k9 jack um Funny thing he talked about, a little little thing uh, that Ben talked about in one of my interviews with him is the caps. The caps to these uh, these tubes are embossed, as you can see. <laughs> and to make it worthwhile, he had to buy like 8,000 of them or something. And I don't know, I just think that's a funny, funny little story in the trials and tribulations of starting up a small business. And Ben Belkin is an entrepreneur already and a knife lover, so he just hit the ground running with this knife company. And uh, it sounds funny to say, but I'm proud of him. And I, I, I only mean I'm proud of him because I know him. I don't mean I'm proud of him like, oh, my little Ben has grown up and made a wonderful knife company. It's just, I'm proud to know him. He's a very interesting, cool guy. And he's done this very, you know, he set out to do something and he accomplished it through really hard work and, and, uh, and vision. And uh, I'm proud to know him. So that's what I mean. Okay, so in here, you get the pog uh, with the artwork of whatever the knife is. K9 Jack in this case. Uh, I have all of these collected. My daughters want the stickers. They're not allowed to have them. Um, the knife always comes wrapped up in a nice uh, um, cloth, microfiber cloth. And then, of course, you get a cool sticker with the uh, artwork dag nabbit not my morning guys well anyway there's a sticker that comes in there too it says walk and talk i'll leave it hidden in there so the daughters don't get at it okay let me show it to you with a couple of a couple of knives i know you've already seen this knife because uh, a number of other uh, trusted voices out there have shown it off but i want to show it with a couple of other slip joints just so you get the idea of size uh, here it is with a standard size, uh, what is that, 91 millimeters, I guess, uh, Swiss Army knife. Um, and here it is with the beer and sausage. This is the other kind of, of um, spear point that I really like with the long pull and the machine ground swedge. Uh, yeah, those lines are almost parallel, but I don't know. Uh, all the other accoutrement, or all the other little flourishes on the, detail, on the um, knife make it... Uh, make it feel better. How did this happen? All right. I have to go through my clean out my clean my knives, but there it is with the beer and sausage, which I know uh, got a lot of uh, attention and press when it came out. So maybe some of you, maybe some of y'all know what that one looks like. All right. A couple more. Uh, here is a very common slip joint knife. This is the case um, trapper. And if it's not a case, usually trappers are that size anyway. So uh, like a three and a quarter inch blade, uh, main blade. And so it's a little bit smaller than that. This is a totally manageable size, I think. Um, it's big and that blade is nice and broad, but it's not too much. I, I dare say you can carry this in your pocket without a slip and not, and not be in too much uh, discomfort. Here it is with the, oh, which one is this? The 86? Man, I love this one. I just can never remember the number. Yeah, this is the 86. And uh, it's a fairly large... It's a fairly large one for my GEC collection, I gotta say. Uh, and it's the exact size. It's just about the exact size, handle-wise. Um, love that knife. With this beautiful faux tortoise shell. It's very nice. All right, and then last up, here it is with the GEC Viper. Uh, one of my favorites, the number 47, also about the exact same size. Now, if you look, this one is very similar to the Jack Wolf Knives laid back jack. He made the laid back a little bit smaller and reduced a bit of that sway back, which I which I appreciate. And uh, really, I don't know, kind of perfected the sway back jack with this. All right, so la that's what I'll do. Last up, as I as I uh, leave you. I will I'll put a little family line up here of the Jack Wolf knives in no particular, well, 
I'm going to put them in a particular order. This is a pain in the butt here. I just don't want to stain any of my micarta with, with blood. Look at that. What a beautiful lineup of amazing knives. Ben Belkin, you're doing good work, man. Look at what you've done. Beautiful. Okay, so this video has been about this very sharp K9 jack. Be careful with the one-handed closing. If you want to try and be cool on camera, uh, you might want to practice it first. All right, Ben, thanks for bringing this beauty into the world. I really, really appreciate it. What a gorgeous knife. I love Jack Wolf knives. And uh, this one, man, this is taking the cake for me. Taking the cake, an unexpected favorite. All right, take care.